Hey there, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope you guys are being encouraged, being lifted up, and you are just just having an incredible time. And yet, even as I say this, as I look around at Facebook, as I talk to people in person, I can just see that people's anxieties are going through the roof. I, I see people's stresses are going through the roof, and, and it's triggering addictions, and it's triggering, you know, uh, frustrations and problems at home. And I know that as much as I want to wish that you guys, everyone's having an incredible week, there are many who are not. There are many who, when these new restrictions came into place, just simply got overwhelmed with discouragement and said, why, why can't we just do the things that we used to do? You know, people are looking at the, the low hospital cases or the low death rate and they say, can't we just move forward a little bit? Even this week, I talked to somebody whose wedding I was supposed to be doing moving forward here, and they just want to they just want to move forward with life. And so I know how discouraging people can be right now. And I just have a challenge for you today. And the challenge is this: persevere. Persevere. Don't give up up. The world that we live in have got, has gone through so many more trials and tribulations. There's been world wars. There's been, been way worse kind of plagues and famines. There's been so many things that have happened in the world today. And the one thing we can hold on to is that the world has survived. We have come through the other side. Not only has the world gone through a lot of stuff, the church as well has gone through so much trials so much tribulation in the history of the church. There has been persecution. There has been people put to death for their faith. There have been people trying to reach to the kind of the darkest reaches of the world to share the gospel with so many, so many struggles. And yet God's people have continued to thrive. We have survived. We have thrived. We have grown. We have overcome because we overcome with the power of God. So if you are discouraged right now, today I want to tell you, persevere. Make it through. You have a strong and powerful God who will never be defeated. I was looking at this graphic this week or this video kind of graphic showing all the different empires of the world as far back as they could record it. It was just this map where, you know, the different empires would grow, uh, you know, the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire and all these different empires would grow. And one thing that was always certain in this video was that every empire would eventually be overcome. Every country kind of failed. The, the, all, everything was was destroyed and, and rebuilt again. But one thing as we look at history that we can totally see is that God has never been destroyed. The church has never been destroyed. And so one of the incredible marks of a biblical church is a church that perseveres, a church that makes it through every single difficult time because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God in us, and we will always have victory, people. And I just want to encourage you, throw that discourage aside, discouragement aside and say, we will have victory. God is bigger than all of our problems. I read some of my favorite passages, such as James 1, 2, and 4. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be, that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. We mature in our faith. We mature in, in our relationship with God when we go through things that stretch us. And it is those times that make us stronger and make us more prepared for the incredible things that God wants to do in our lives moving forward. It is what makes us strong. Just like when you work out, it is through the straining of your muscles, through, through the pulling of the fibers of your muscles that you build muscle, that you build strength. If you never go through hard times with your muscles, your muscles will never grow. And the same is true with your faith, with your hope, with your love. It all needs to be stretched. It all needs to be tested. And right now you might feel like you're in a time of testing, but I want to tell you something. When you look to Jesus, he gets you through all the trials that you could ever face. Just like they say in Psalms 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. 
Hebrews 10, 36 and 39 almost echoes the same thing. It says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised, what it, we will, God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and who are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Do not shrink back in these times of trial, but rather stand up and declare the greatness of God. Stand up and declare your faith in Jesus Christ. Begin to just take peace, knowing that God works things out, and it's going to be okay. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. I got a lot of verses today. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, and this is going to be important, been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. We boast in the hope, the, the knowledge that we're going to get through this. Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he has given to us. These verses just talk about persevere, grow your love for God, grow your faith in God, and God will produce in you this incredible hope. And as, even as I share this message today, I have an incredible hope for the awesome things that God is going to do, how he is going to grow us through this, and we are going to overcome, and we're going to realize the importance of being, for example, more intentional, being more devoted to one another, conquering kind of the demons in our lives, the, the giants in our lives, if you will. But it all begins with a commitment to not give up. And there's a couple th areas, especially even in the verses about perseverance that we read, that we need to focus on. And I, I think there's three areas, and we see these areas in, in the love chapter, you know, 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13 says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And if whatever you're going through right now, if you if you just turn to Jesus and then begin to focus on these three things, you are going to you're just going to find that you're going to come through with with you know with flying colors, I think as they say, you're just going to come through on top of the world because you're going to do it the right way. And so I want to focus on these three things for just a few short minutes if you just bear with me here and we're going to start by focusing on hope. Hope came up in almost every passage that we read, and I want to again look to hope. And hope is one of those weird words. It's, it's one of those words that the English language has changed over the years. And so when we look at the word hope, so often today we think hope is like, I wish. I wish and I wish. And a definition I found online of hope was this. Hope is commonly used to mean a wish. You know, I hope the Jets win the playoffs. I hope Toronto doesn't doesn't fall apart in the playoffs, or I hope I, I see a big deer while I'm hunting today. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope we have pizza. And it's these hopes and these wishes and these kind of dreams, but that's not the hope of the Bible. But in the Bible, hope is the confidence, the confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in faithfulness. Hope in the Bible isn't that I hope something, it is the expectation that what God has said will happen. So when I have hope, I have an expectation. I'm I'm already anticipating. I'm eagerly waiting. A better way would be, a better modern exp example would be Christmas. I don't hope Christmas arrives, but I have a hope for the incredible time I will have at Christmas. You know, we know it will arrive. We eagerly anticipate. We expect it to arrive. And so we need to have hope. And so where do we put that hope? What do we eagerly anticipate? We can eagerly anticipate today that God's promises are going to be fulfilled. I put my hope in God's promises. I put my hope in, in, 
in what God has told me in Scripture. And so I got a couple of long scriptures to read today, and I just bear with me, and not even bear with me, pour into them and think about them for a moment right now. Let's look at some of the promises in Romans 8, 28 to 39. We're going to look at 11 verses here. We're going to, we're going to read through them. It says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And we know that God works all things together for the good. God takes all that garbage. He takes all the stuff you're going through. And he doesn't cause it, but he, he uses it for his good. And what an incredible promise that no matter what you're going through, you can eagerly expect, you can eagerly anticipate that God is going to move it towards something better. God is going to change it to be something better. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among, among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered sheep to the slaughter. And I look at that and I guess that the other promise we have is that God has a plan for you. He pre-made a plan for your life and you simply have to seek after him. And if you want God's plan, follow after God. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those who? who God has chosen. It is God who justifies who then is he who contemns no one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Again, we have an incredible promise. This incredible promise that says nothing can come against us. That we will face many trials, but we have a God on our side who sent his son, but also raised him from the dead. What in the world can come against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As, as it is written, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have an incredible God. He loves us so much and there is nothing that can separate us from his love. And he loves us enough to take care of us. He loves us enough to walk us through that valley of the shadow of death. He loves us enough to send his son to die on the cross for us. We will overcome. We will be okay. We will persevere. 1 Peter 5.10 And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Another incredible promise. The promise of heaven. Finally, one last one before we move on. It says Hebrews 13.5 and 6. Here's what it says. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never, this is the promise, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mortals do to me? There is nothing I have to be afraid of because there is an eternal place for me that God is going to walk me through the struggles right here, right now, today. God wants to give me an abundant life, an incredible life, and an eternal life. That doesn't mean nothing bad will ever happen, but I will be filled of the joy of the Lord, the peace that passes all understanding, and the hope, the eager expectation as I wait for God to fulfill all the promises that we know he always does. Wow, what an incredible message when you're going through a time of discouragement. So we've got that hope, hope. That, 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 that eagerly anticipating God's promises. And then we have faith. Faith, in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. It is saying we eagerly expect this and we are 100% confident that it's going to happen. We anticipate it, we expect it, we hope for it. And then we 
and then we eagerly, and then we, with confidence, we move forward. And, and that's one of the important things that I always share is that, is that faith is the confidence, is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see, but the confidence to move forward, to persevere. It is the confidence to take action, the confidence to make change. In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without your deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. We got to persevere in faith. We got to keep, you know, worshiping God. We got to keep showing up to be part of the body of Christ. We have to keep living the life that God has called us to live because that's what faith is. And in our perseverance, the church grows. In our perseverance, the gospel message grows. In our perseverance, heaven grows because people see our confidence and they say, we want to be part of that. We need to, we need to stop you know, shrinking back, as the Bible said earlier on. We need to stop shrinking and we need to stand firm, stand tall, and say, I will do what God asked me to do no matter what the world expects of me. And so let us make sure that we never, that we never give up on obedience to God. That we never give up on obedience to God. And finally, the last thing you need to never give up on, especially in this time of crisis, is to never stop loving people. Never stop loving God. Never stop loving people. I look at Facebook, even from Christian to Christian, from church to church, we see people full of, uh, of anxiety and frustration, and we begin to lash out at one another, and we are seeing people destroy the image of the church within the church simply because we have failed to love one another. People will disagree on things all the time. We disagree on people disagreeing on COVID, people disagreeing on masks, people disagreeing on churches, having smaller numbers, people disagreeing on vaccinations. And so often we begin to tear one another down. And yet the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8, love is patient. Love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it does not is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres. Love never fails. Guys, I have great news. Great news of good joy. You know, as the angel said before Jesus was born, you know, we bring you great news of good tidings for today a Savior is born. But my message for you today is that the Savior was born, the Savior died, and the Savior conquered death so that you could conquer the things that destroy your joy, destroy your peace, destroy your hope hope, destroy your life. That is why Jesus died, to conquer the things of this world and to prepare heaven for you. So you need to know Jesus. You need to live in Jesus. You need to be full of that Holy Spirit. You need to say, I will do what God says, not simply to follow a list of rules, but to be in relationship with a God who overcomes all the time. So let us remember that these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. God will get you through. It's his promises and you can take hope in that. You can put your faith in that. And because of that, you can grow your love for other people. Let's pray. God, you are an amazing king. And God, right now, as so many people are discouraged, give us a hope for a better tomorrow. We can eagerly anticipate a better tomorrow. And because we can eagerly anticipate us, let us live out our faith today as we love other people like you would love them. God, let us get rid of discouragement. Let us get rid of anger, frustration, uh, resentment, God, and let us live in the peace that only you can give when we choose to persevere, to not give up on obeying you. God, help this COVID season to be a time where the church grows, where I grow, where my family grows, where we all grow closer to you. We love you, Jesus, in your awesome and holy name. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Live with that faith, hope, and love this week. Have yourself an amazing, amazing week because God never loses and God will get you through.